Hi, I'm Olaf Bazowski. In the next couple videos, I'll be showing you what are currently my favorite features in uh, Apple Logic Pro 10. And to start off, I'd like to talk a bit about the sound of digital audio. I come from the analog era. That means that I used to work in an analog studio with uh, an analog console, effect processing and synths and samplers to the left and right of me. And not only was that a lot of fun, but it also sounded very good. And by good, I mean pleasant and nice. Uh, it was a lot easier to get a warm sounding mix using that analog equipment. And as soon as I started to work inside the box, inside Logic Pro, that was the first thing that I missed because digital audio like in Logic Pro is perfect. Depending on the equipment you use, it can go as low as 20 hertz and extremely high, like 384,000 hertz. So that literally can pick up everything. Now, I'm not to say that that is not good, but it's not the sound that I like. For me personally, I like it a little less perfect. Analog equipment is not perfect by any means. So um, what you want to do if you're uh, after that analogish sound is find a way to make it less perfect. Well, first you need to know that analog equipment, almost any analog equipment will distort your audio running through it just a tiny bit. Not the way that rock guitars are distorted by uh, amplifiers, but just very subtle, just a tiny little bit. And it shaves off a little bit of the transients. It takes out a bit of the high frequencies. And all these uh, little imperfections together make it sound a little warmer, a little more analog. And um, there's a couple ways to do this in Logic Pro. Uh, by far, my favorite one is the Overdrive plugin that can really give some weight and warmth to uh, sounds if you keep it subtle. Let me give you an example. This is a very simple beat. Got a compressor on my uh, master output. And let me just add the overdrive plugin. The other distortion plugins are not really suitable for this uh, uh, purpose. And this setting right here is uh, the default, uh, which is no good for this. <laughs> uh, I'll bring up the tone all the way to 20,000 hertz. I'll bring down the drive and um, I'll turn level compensation on even though it doesn't do a really good job but uh, you got the option so um, I always turn it on the drive here this is where you want to go keep it subtle maybe 2 dBs this will bring up the level 2 dB so I'm going to bring down the level at the output so let's a B this a bit this is without And that is width. Do you hear the difference there? It's got a lot more weight. It's got a lot more presence. There's a bit less uh, high frequencies, but actually that's what I want for this. And you can even play around with the tone to even more tame those high frequencies. Using the overdrive on your master is fine, but now everything goes through it. But what happens if you put this on all channels individually? Let me just quickly do that, like so. Even going to put it on my reverb channels. Okay, let me quickly AB this, just select all the tracks and now I can uh, turn them all off at once. So that's the overdrive plugin. I like this a lot to give my tracks more body, more uh, bottom end. Now there's another plugin in Logic Pro 10 that can give you a more analog sound. I'm going to remove all the overdrives. Don't need them for this. And the magic word of recent years in plugin land is tape, right? Everybody needs a tape plugin. Well, in Logic Pro 10, you get a tape plugin, but it's hidden a bit. It's not actually where you would expect to find it, which is in the distortion folder. No, it's actually in the delay folder. It's, of course, the tape delay. Now, what am I talking about? A tape delay to make things more analog? Yeah, everybody can figure that out, but not this. <laughs> not a lot of people realize that you can use the tape delay in Logic with zero feedback and zero dry. And turning off tempo sync, I can go as low as zero milliseconds. 
So now I only get the sound of the tape without the delay, without the echoes. Let's have a listen. This is just the, the kick drum. Turn it off. Yeah, there's something happening there. Let me also put this on the master. And you know what? While we're at it, let me go do this tedious work of copying all these tape plugins again. And let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, certainly takes out a bit of that edge. Let me turn these off and uh, focus on the master for a bit, because what you can do uh, using the clip threshold is uh, actually drive the tape deck a bit more. And if you ask me, this is a really authentic sounding tape distortion. But like I said, always keep these things subtle. Now, what if you decide you want to use the tape delay or the overdrive on all your channels from now on? You really don't want to be copying all these plugins over all the channels all the time, right? And you don't have to. And that's something that I'll talk about in the next video.